Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is Big Game Boomer. Hope y'all are doing well this evening. Uh, got a great guest today. Uh, we've got a uh, legend from South Carolina quarterback, uh, Steven Garcia. And before before we, I'm bringing him on here, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Um, hit that, hit the like button. Um, and then we're on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, everywhere you can name it. So I said I'm bringing guests on all the time now. Um, so let's bring the man himself into the show. Steven, yeah. what's happening, Yo, man? How you doing? Much. Just out at the beach, man. <laughs> what? Yeah. What What beach are you at? St. Pete. St. Pete. Pete. Okay. Yep. Man, that's a lot nicer, man. I'm out in Oklahoma. Um, it's uh, hot as hell no up beaches. here right now. Uh, no beaches over there. Yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt. So what are you up to these days, man? Man, there's there's a couple different things, man. Uh, doing still doing the quarterback training. Um, yeah, that's kind of my main my main deal. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I got a couple different options uh, that I've been kind of dealing with. Um, you know, my my girlfriend is a car dealer, so I've been getting into the, the car business a little bit. Um, I would like to brag about the stocks, but the stocks are complete shit right now. So <laughs> the crypto is shit. So that's yeah, I've, I've lost a I've lost my ass on that deal, but. Yeah, man, just uh, just kind of just bouncing around, and there's a couple other things in the works right now. Just kind of trying to wait and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's cool, cool. Always see what guys are doing uh, after they're playing. Hey, so I don't know. This is big college uh, football news today. You follow the art, whole Arch Manning deal? Yeah, yeah. Did you see, he, did you see he committed to Texas today? I, I did see that. Uh, yeah, what did you think about that? My son reposted on Instagram, and I said severely overrated. Um, <laughs> So I actually work out uh, a couple of the quarterbacks that um, play at Berkeley High School. Yeah. And so Berkeley High School played against Archie out there and just kind of exposed them. And I'm, I'm not I'm not a big Manning guy. Uh, just never have been. Not going to take anything away from Eli or Peyton. Those guys are freaking Hall of Famers. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just I just think there's so much hype around this kid, and there's a lot of pressure. I, to be honest, I hope he does well. I just don't see it. That's just my personal opinion. And if people want to get pissed off about that, then who cares? Yeah. I mean, like the thing about it, like he's so, Oh, I, I guess, you know, there's overhyped and there's overrated overhyped is when the media is just blowing his name up. Um, right. And it's just like the kid. I, I mean, I, it's, it's just all because of his last name. I mean, I was looking at the recruiting rankings. I think there's like three or four guys that you could argue that are probably better than him. Um, in that class. So I, I, I a hundred percent agree. Yeah. So, so we'll see, you know, excited for him. That's always a big decision. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so, so let's, let's talk about, you know, you at South Carolina, man, you kind of are the man when it comes to South Carolina football. Um, when I talk to any South Carolina fans, they're like, Steven Garcia, he is, he's the man he's, you know, kind of who we are. He's our favorite. Um, so I had to get you on the show. I remember back when, when uh, I was younger, when you were playing, and I, I, a, fr a friend of mine was a cheerleader at South Carolina, and she was, you know, just saying that you're the man on campus <laughs> during those years. So, I was about to say, be uh, careful with this. I don't know where the story is going, man. Be careful, my girlfriend's listening. <laughs> no, no, they're just saying you were that dude uh, in Columbia. So yeah, so that, let, let's talk about that 2014 or excuse me, 2010 season. Um, you know, you're the only quarterback at South Carolina to win uh, the SEC East. Um, you know, how'd you guys? That was a special season for you guys, wasn't it? Oh, it was unbelievable. Um, you know, I, it's it's kind of funny. I, there's there's definitely been better teams, and you know, Connor Shaw gets all the praise, and it's well deserved. Uh, you know, he's never lost at home, and one most winningest quarterback in history. I, you know, I talk to the guy, you know, not daily, but you know, every week. Um, yeah. But we did not get along when we were when we were in the locker room. He was the polar opposite of me. He was straight, 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 narrow. I was uh, the complete opposite. I was bouncing off every single wall, and that's just. You know, that's how I operate. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, but, but in 2010, to kind of get back to your point, um, a lot of good things happened. Uh, and, you know, we had a good team. We had a really good team. Uh, not as good as Auburn, apparently, but, um, you know, it's just, 
it's it's magical. And I think about it to this day, I still get people that, you know, reminisce some the old row sports, you know, just uh, posted something about the last team from the East other than Georgia was the team that beat Alabama. And that was yeah. us in 2010. It's like, holy shit. That was a long time ago, man. That was yeah. a very long time ago. What what uh, was it like? What was it like when y'all beat Alabama that year? I just I remember watching that game, and it just seems like Columbia just kind of fell uh, fell apart that for that that day. I mean, it was just a crazy <laughs> crazy atmosphere. Yeah, she she's listening, so I can't go into too much detail. But uh, <laughs> it was it was a very it was a very fun night. <laughs> we had a blast, man. Um, you know, it, it lasted for for the the whole week and. You know, we lost to Kentucky the next week. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was awesome. I mean, you guys in that year, you beat Georgia, Alabama, Florida, and Clemson. I mean, I can't. I I have to go back and look at some some stats, but like, I I can't remember the last time that that South Carolina did that. Probably never. Um, yeah. You know, and it's and I I, I really like you know not to preface this whole conversation but i like where coach beamer's going with yeah. the program and i liked i liked coach mushamp as well um he reached out to me several times and wanted me to get me back on campus and wanted me part of the program and several other things and um so I'm, I'm i'm forever grateful for that however uh coach beamer was there in 2010 he was there in part of the recruiting process he knows columbia he loves columbia and i think that uh i think we're where we're heading is 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 good yeah so, so yeah so beamer was there when you when you were yeah, playing yep, yeah so yep. you knew him beforehand yeah i've had him beamer on the show i think he's a great guy um and, and a great coach i'm for sure i'm completely bought in to to see how you know up to that program i mean he's just he's doing all the right things i mean getting out everywhere supporting you know every school uh, you know all the sports um yeah he's 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 the man. What about what about when you played with Spurrier? You got any good Spurrier stories? <laughs> well, how how PG do I have to be on this thing? <laughs> you did not not too bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's several stories um, that I could get into. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think off the top of my head that would be appropriate to tell, <laughs> and I, I don't think any of them, man. It, we uh we had a very we had a very um headbutting competition just we didn't see eye to eye and that's that's why connor was so successful he saw how shitty me and coach Spurrier's relationship was yeah and he's like all right so steven's getting in trouble for this i'm gonna do the complete opposite and you know it, it obviously worked out for him um but i just that's just not how i am i'm just not wired like that um but uh i'm trying to think of some Spurrier stories that I could actually tell because he, right I mean, he's he's known for just challenging his quarterbacks, and, and yes, and you can and see I, it on the sidelines of throwing throwing the visor and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> for sure. And and I'm I'm just not that guy to just let kind of things simmer, yeah, and not say anything. Uh, so he would say something in like the in the team meeting after a game, and it's like, dude, what are you fucking complaining about, like? <laughs> <laughs> like I don't, I don't understand. Like you're giving me shit in front of all, like literally a hundred, hundred of my teammates about my my class attire. Like I'm not wearing a golf attire to go to class. I'm not wearing shoes. I'm wearing sandals. Like why, why is this a subject? And you know, looking back, and I tell people this all the time. It's like looking back, I wish I would have been less hard headed and would have just done what the hell he asked me to do. Um, I think I would have had a different college experience definitely a different college career if I would have just shut the hell up and just listened and just done the small things like cut my hair, shave my beard, wear, you know, wear appropriate clothing to class. So I don't you know. Guys got, I mean, he, he, he made you guys kind of focus on, you got, had to wear a certain dress attire to classes and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the entire time he's recruiting me, never said one thing about how long my hair was, my, how thick my beard was, never said anything. As soon as I got there, I graduated early. I get there in January. The first thing he says to me, all right, nice to be here. And, uh, you're going to cut your hair and shave your beard, right? I was like, uh, no, I'm not. I'm absolutely not. You just spent like two years telling me I didn't have to. Um, but it's like, it's like you know, it's hair. It's, 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 it'll grow back. Um, but yeah, the, the, the dress attire was a whole different issue. 
Yeah, that's funny. Do you still keep in touch with any of your former teammates? I mean, you guys had some studs on that team, like Lattimore, Alshon yep. Jeffrey. I mean, you guys still keep in touch? Yeah, that's funny you bring that up. I actually talked to Alshon today uh, really? on Instagram. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah. I talked to him. I don't, I don't really talk to uh, – I haven't talked to Marcus in God only knows how long. It's been a long time. I know he's out in, like, Portland, Oregon right now. Um. You yeah, haven't talked to him in a while, but uh, yeah, they, I talked to Melvin Ingram, talked to Akeem Augusti, yeah. uh, all those guys, man. DJ Swearinger. I mean, it's the list goes on. Those guys are kind of like a little, they they got their own little white PC deal. Um, Terrence Campbell. Yeah, it, that's one of my best friends. He was one of my uh, linemen when I was playing out there. But yeah, man, all those, all those guys are doing really well. They're kicking ass. And, you know, I love seeing that, man. I love being in contact with those guys. And that's, that's one thing that I miss mo most about. Um, you know, playing was just the locker room, yeah, and being, being around those guys and just kind of shooting the shit, and uh, we had a blast. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that that's part of the thing. It's a fraternity, and uh, that's oh, cool. Yeah. You still keep in touch with some of them. Um, so, you know, one thing. This is a question I got to ask you. When you think of Clemson, what are the first kind of words that kind of come to your mind? Uh, death. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I hated I hated Clemson um, when I was playing. I couldn't care less about it now. Um, I didn't care about it growing up. I, I had no idea where Clemson was on the freaking map. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, it, 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 my uncle played at Florida State, um, and that's as far as I knew about anything about college football. Never anticipated playing college football. Never anticipated playing the SEC. Never anticipated playing at South Carolina. Um, but, yeah, so once I got there, all everyone talked about was how much they hated orange yeah. and how much they hated yeah. purple. And it's yeah. like, why do, why do you guys care so much? Like who care? It, whatever. Um, and then we lost my red shirt year. And then um, after that, you know, we we're on that five streak. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm friends with Taj Boyd. Like I can shoot him a text right now. I'm friends with a lot of those guys and uh, you know, they're, they're good dudes. And just, we just, didn't see eye to eye when uh, we were playing college. And you, football. you never lost. You never lost to Clemson. I, I, I think you were two and zero, right? Yep. Yeah. So that yep. a lot of South Carolina quarterbacks can't say that. So that's no. that's something cool. And Taj Boyd, yeah, he's a cool guy, and he did he did his thing back when Dabo was just getting started. Um, yep. It's funny, yeah. man. People give me people try to heckle me like Clemson. People heckle me on Twitter. It's like, dude, I never lost you guys. Like, I don't know why you're <laughs> exactly shut like, up. <laughs> you're, yeah, your your opinion means nothing to me right now. Yeah, and the thing about the Clemson South Carolina rivalry, because I, I actually grew up a Clemson fan, but okay. not anymore. I went to OU, so I'm an I'm a Sooner now. But like that rivalry, it is a 365 day a year rivalry for sure. Where for like sure. they're arguing about right now, like bass fishing tournaments and talking. 100%. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just. It never stops. Maybe it's, I guess it's because there's no pro team in South Carolina. Right. But that's, uh, that's what they say. Yeah. Yeah. So Dude, yeah. I was, it's, I was about, I was this close to going to Oklahoma. Really? Yeah. So how'd you end up going to South Carolina? Uh, well, I went on a couple of visits, um, up there unofficial. Then I did the official visit, the whole circuit. Um, and coach Spurrier really had one thing to say and it kind of just stuck in my head. It's like, you can go to Oklahoma, you can go to Notre Dame, you can go to Southern Cal, go to these other schools that have tradition, have history, or you can come to South Carolina where we haven't been worth a shit ever. Yeah. Um, and kind of create your own legacy, your own history and all that stuff, which, you know, I like to think that I, I sort of did not in a, not in a great fashion, but you know, we, we did. Um, so that's, that, that was his recruiting pitch pitch. And I mean, I, I, I genuinely like the city of Columbia. It's it's changed a lot since I've been there. Oh, but, it's, yeah, uh, it's but, blown up. Oh my god, dude! They, Little five yeah. points. It's yeah, completely yeah. different. It's a lot different. Um, but yeah, I mean, I still go up there as often as I can, and you know, doing the quarterback training. I still run camps with Perry Orth because um, he's doing the quarterback training up there as well. And so we'll run camps. We've been doing it for the last six years, dude. It's it's unbelievable. Um, so yeah, I try to get up there as often as possible. Yeah. Cool. Cool. What would you say are some of the lo loudest stadiums in the SEC that you've played in? Tennessee was real loud. Yeah. Um, Neyland. Uh, Florida was super loud. 
especially when they beat our ass <laughs> with Tebow. <laughs> yeah. um, George, Georgia it was I'm trying to think. I, I actually didn't lose at in Athens. I've never lost in Athens. Really? Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, we played there twice, and Blake Mitchell won the first year. Then I uh, played the next year and ended up winning that deal. Um, I think, man, I, I might be mistaken, but uh, Vanderbilt, no. Kentucky, no. <laughs> no. Um, although Kentucky did beat our ass after we, we beat Bama. Beat Bama, yeah. Yep. Bama was pretty loud. It wasn't that loud. Um, I never played at LSU, never played at AM, and um, never played at Missouri. I'm trying to think what else. Never played at Mississippi State. Played at Ole Miss. Wasn't that loud. Um, Williams Bryce was loud as shit, man. It, yeah, got, well, it got pretty loud. Yeah, that's yeah. that was my next thing. Is is all the time on Twitter we're arguing about what's the louder stadium, Death Valley or Williams Bryce Stadium? Um, I, feel, I feel like I feel like we're louder, but again, I I don't remember losing in Clemson either. So <laughs> I think I, I may have been at that game. Quiet. Yeah. <laughs> The thing, the thing about like about Willie Willie B is like South Carolina has bigger opponents coming in, so like you get like Georgia and Florida coming into Columbia, crowds more is more jacked up for it. But we're like Clemson. Look at their ACC schedule; they've got like Boston College and Louisville and Syracuse coming into play, and I think the fans have just gotten kind of spoiled now. Uh, right. With winning, it's just I, I've been to both. It, it's uh, Willie B is just a lot more louder than it used. To I feel been. I feel like it is too. Yeah, yeah. I do remember playing against Bama, and those uh, those guys called me uh, "take my ass back to Mexico." That was kind of funny. <laughs> and I was like, "Dude, what the hell are you talking about, man? I'm Cuban. Shut the hell up!" <laughs> I think you guys are sweating your ass off there wearing those bow ties. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what what do you think about the whole NIL thing these these days? Man, I wish. I wish it would have been going on uh, currently. Yeah. Um, or back then, rather. Uh, yeah, I would uh, I'd, I'd have a nice little nest egg. Yeah, um, for sure. But I'm, I'm glad these guys are, you know, they're they're making money, man. They, they deserve it, truth be told, yeah. um, for the most part. There's other guys that I don't think deserve it, but, they, you know, they're <laughs> five-star, four-star guys that, you know, getting paid. But, yeah, um, I think it's going to change the landscape of college football. Yeah, I think More. it's definitely. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah, no, go I, ahead. I think I, I think it is going to change because, like, we're seeing. Like, I saw like a pretty highly recruit, recruited guy uh, go to Louisville this week, um, and I don't think you would have seen that um, if without NIL. You're um, uh, you're not from you're not from Kentucky, are you? No, no. Where you, where are you from? Uh, so I'm actually I grew up. I'm from South Carolina. I was born in Spartanburg. Oh, but okay. uh but I grew up in Roswell, uh just north of Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, so, so my uh my mom's side of the family is from Kentucky. So it's it's okay. pronounced it's pronounced Louisville. Louisville. You got, okay. you I got butchered it. butter in your mouth. Louisville. <laughs> Louisville. Okay. Louisville. Yeah, you it's not Louis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing though, is like you're seeing schools like that pulling off recruits, and I, I don't think Otherwise, you would see that. Otherwise, right. they'd just be going to Bama or Ohio State or Georgia. Uh, it's so top yeah. heavy now. For sure, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but you know, that being said, to answer your question, man, I think it's a good thing. I think it's uh, it's good for the guys to you know make money. They they should. The NCAA has been making God knows how much money off these guys yeah. for as long as possible. This should have happened probably 20, 30 years ago. I mean, I've always thought it's ridiculous that like a school can sell let's say a Steven Garcia jersey, you know, and they can make thousands of dollars off of it, but the player can't make a, a dime off of it. I mean, it's... Dude, uh, I, got, I got fined from the NCAA $19, I'll never forget it, $19.24 for using a equipment truck from, our, from the University of South Carolina to move from my apartment to my house. Are you my kidding me? Year. I was like, are you, you guys got to be shitting me. You, you That's ridiculous. To. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was so irate, but now you got, now you got guys that are getting, you know, Rolls Royce dealerships and, you know, getting cars and stuff, but you've got got Yeah. You've got guys that are making more than like the actual head coach on, 
on the team or, or the assistant coaches. I mean, it's, 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 it's like, it's like how, do you, how, do you, how do you, how are you going to tell that guy to show up to class? Yeah. How are you going to tell that guy to show up to a workout? Like it's, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it's interesting. It's going to be interesting. It's just, it's just getting started. We'll see how it ends up playing out. I just don't know if it's like sustainable because like these boosters and stuff, like if they, you know, they, they put these collectives together. And so like, let's say a school puts 30 million in the collective and they use that to pay the recruits and players. Well, once that collective, once it's empty, then they're going to want the, you know, they're going to want to fill that collective back up. And right. so this is, you're going to have to ante up every year. And I just don't know if that's a sustainable model. But I mean, People are going to get tired of doing that, I think, especially if like you do that. And like a guy, you say you pay a million dollars for a guy. He's there for a year, doesn't like it, and then transfers. Like, okay. Isn't that exactly what the kid from Texas did? The mullet guy, the Ewers? Ewers, or? yeah, yeah. He From Ohio State to Texas, yeah. Didn't he get – he got paid like a million dollars to go to Ohio State and then all that? Yeah, I, th I think so. I, I mean, I don't know the details, but yeah, I, I'm – Pretty sure he went to Ohio State because he could make NIL uh, money there instead of in Texas because they didn't. I don't think they had passed oh, laws right. yet. Yeah, yeah. Either way, man, the whole thing is just so baffling to me, and I don't know enough about it. I'd love to try to figure out how to make some money off of it, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for real, for real. So, uh, you know, last couple questions I've got for you. Um, you know, you're, you're high on Beamer. I like Beamer as well. What do you think the expectations are for South Carolina this year record wise? Cause they've got a tough schedule. Yeah, no, they do. And, and I feel like we always do. Um, our out of conference games are typically not cakewalks. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I would love, love to see a 10 win season, whether that's attainable, who knows? Um, you're you're a Spencer Rattler guy, right? Or no? Yeah, he. I, I like Rattler. I mean, he came from OU. He had a great year in 2020. Last year just kind of fell off the rails because I think the whole Lincoln Riley didn't have his heart in it. Was looking for USC. So I, I think he's going to do well uh, this year. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a hell of a lot different in the SEC. Um, being in a new home is always different. Um, I actually ha I worked with two players that play at OU, well, used to, uh, Mario Williams, receiver. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's at yep. USC now. Yep, the yeah. other, US, the, the fake USC. The, yeah. yeah, yeah, they don't so, like, they don't like calling you guys USC. They, they call you guys US of C. Yeah, I know. We, we, were, we, were, <laughs> for, we were a school, we were a school before they were a state, so. Yeah, I know. California, California's got a whole bunch of diff different issues that I'm not even going to talk about right now, but, um, <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, there's there's a couple of guys, and there's another kid uh, who's played tight end over there, and um, you know, it, it it was like a a volcano erupting over there. Um, and I asked about you know how was how was Rattler, and they said you know the guy's a phenomenal talent, great talent guy, and um, they said hopefully he can kind of get the locker room. Exact yeah. word for hopefully he can get the locker room you know on board. I mean, does so, does does the quarterback need for a team to be successful? Does the quarterback need to be kind of the guy in the locker room? Absolutely, absolutely. If you don't have if you don't have that presence in the locker room, no one's going no one's going to war with you. No one's going to battle for you. No one gives a shit if you get sacked. If you throw a pick, like you know, it's it's and that's what I'm trying to tell my son. He's going to high school um, this coming year, and it's like, dude, you got to be a freaking dog. You have to. Yeah. You have to. Let you have to let your balls hang, man. You just you just have to. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> otherwise these guys. I mean, at the end of the day, people feed their families from the sport. People, yeah. people provide. You know, it could, it could it could pay you so much money, so much you could make so much off of this sport that you got to respect it. And if you don't, if you don't, if you're not that leader guy, no one's gonna follow you. It's like anything else, man. You 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 gotta you gotta lead people to to be successful. And if you don't have that presence in the locker room, you're, you're never going to win games. It's just, it's very simple. Well, I think Rattler, I think he did a great job when he got benched by Caleb Williams or when he got benched for Caleb Williams last year, I right. was expecting him to like literally transfer like the next day after that Texas game. And, and he hung, he hung around 
Um, it wasn't pouting or saying spouting off to the media, just kind of did his thing, came in when Lincoln Riley needed him to. So that impressed me. I knew he was going to transfer, but, but that impressed me, um, to, to see him do that. So no, I a hundred percent agree. And that's, that's big, man. That, in this day and age, man, when something doesn't go right, kids will haul ass in the blink of an eye. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, my hat's off to him. I've never met the kid. Um, hopefully I meet him next month when I do the camp with uh, Perry, but um you know I've, I've heard nothing but good things so far in uh in the columbia circle so i'm looking forward to it um and i think i mean it i'd love to see 10 wins i i really would uh to yeah get kind of I mean, all the way back to your question um yeah i love I, 10 wins i've got the schedule it's just God, they play at arkansas which is is tough and then they're home, home they're, yeah they're crossover games it's just at arkansas and then they got a&m coming to columbia i mean it's just a and M's paying a lot of money to other players, according to Saban. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that that crap is hilarious. Anybody. Alabama's yeah. never paid anybody to go there. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. Uh, I think it's been going on for a while, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. Hey, so uh, yeah, I, I I think the seal. I think it, the ceiling is ten and two. The floor is seven and five. Uh, that's kind of how I see it. Yeah. That's um, it. Pretty good one. Yeah, I like yeah. That. Vegas. I saw Vegas like their over under was like five and a half games, um, which I think is a little low. Um, so if hammer, yeah, if you're bet, yeah, hammer that over on that. Um, uh, so, last question for you: What what do you like more? You know, when you were playing there, did you like the entrance to coming out to that 2001 Odyssey song, or did you like when the crowd would kind of go crazy with the sandstorm? Sandstorm. It's not even close. Is, is it pretty crazy? It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, there's and there, and what people don't really talk about is people play Thunderstruck out there, and I, I'm an ACDC guy. Yeah, <laughs> and I freaking just absolutely went bonkers on it. I remember Coach Burr like trying to talk to me like in between plays, and that song would be going on, and I'm just like, <laughs> just going out of my mind. Um, but yeah, like I, I was, I'm not a huge, I was never a huge 2001 guy. I just it doesn't do it for me. I couldn't care less. Yeah, the sandstorm definitely gets the crowd more juiced, and it, it goes. Yeah. I, I've been there. It's crazy. You know, the thing that that drove my that I thought I think it's hilarious, and it drove my granddad. He's a Clemson fan, insane to to his grave was the the chicken screech, like oh, on God. third downs, <laughs> like he, every, yeah, every yeah oh. every, every single time he heard that thing, he would just go boo. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was so funny. But, I love uh, it. Yeah, man. I, I did not like chicken scratches or screech, whatever it's called. Yeah. No, no. That's it's, funny. it's it's funny though. All right, For man. Sure. Well, hey, hey, where can I, I really appreciate you coming on? I, I know you're at the beach right now, so it really really means a lot for you to hop on and, and talk ball with me. Um, you know, can you tell everyone where to go find you on social media? Yeah, just uh, at Steven Garcia's uh, Twitter, then uh, Instagram. I I got to look, actually. I think it's like <laughs> underscore five or something. I don't – let me look. <laughs> yeah, it's Steven underscore Garcia five is, is the Instagram. I, it's actually a pretty funny Instagram, so people should follow that one more <laughs> than the Twitter. Right, you heard the man. Y'all y'all go give him a follow. All right, Steven. Well, I appreciate it, man. You take it easy, all right? Absolutely, Talk later. man. I Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. We'll see you. See you. That is Steven Garcia. That was awesome. One of the best quarterbacks at South Carolina of all time. And he was 2-0 against Clemson. Never lost. Um, You know, we'll see how South Carolina does this year. He He's, he's pretty optimistic. I'm, you know, I think they could go 10-2. and two. They could go 7-5. and five. Uh, six and six. It just, it really depends on it. Can Rattler uh, make some plays and that offensive line has got to play better this year. Um, so that was a really fun interview. Uh, we're, as I said, we're going to keep this stuff going. Got some giveaways coming out. I think I'm going to post something tonight about another helmet giveaway. Um, we did that last night. Um, so uh, please just do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We're, Find us on Apple, uh, Spotify, um, and just, you know, 
I appreciate you guys listening. This is fun. Love talking college football. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. I am going to go get some dinner. Peace. Oh, <laughs>